we now have all the ingredients to build a, our first quantum field theory. So let's first recap what we had in the case of one non-relativistic uh, particle in quantum mechanics. Here the dynamical variable is the position of the particle, which is a function of time t. Nothing here is relativistic, but when I move to quantum field theory, I want to merge quantum mechanics with special relativity. And for that, I require the action, which encodes all the physical law for the system, to be Lorentz invariant. And because it's an just a number, uh, it's a Lorentz scalar. Relativity also requires that we have a similar treatment of space and time. Therefore, we can't have, as in quantum mechanics, time as a parameter and position as a dynamical variable. Therefore, we will move the position uh, from its status of a dynamical variable to a parameter, and that's how we get a field. That's why I use the letter Q uh, in quantum mechanics for the position, because it was a dynamical variable. Now it's a parameter, so I use the letter X. Strictly speaking, what we call a dynamical variable is a function of time, um, not necessarily a function of x. So what we have here is an infinite number of functions of x. For each position x, there is a function of time, which is the amplitude of the field at this position x. So in quantum mechanics, we have only one dynamical variable for one particle. Uh, here we have an infinite number of dynamical variables, one per position x. So far, the field is an abstract object. We haven't specified what it represents physically. Nevertheless, you have already encountered an example of fundamental field previously, the case of the electromagnetic field. So you can think of phi as something analog to the amplitude of the electric or the magnetic field. However, to describe an electromagnetic field, you will need a four vector. We will start with something simpler. We will take the case of a scalar field. So the amplitude of the field at a given point of space-time is just a number which doesn't change when I go from one frame of reference to another. I will also constrain this number to be a real number. So we are dealing here with a real scalar field, which is the simplest example of field I can think of. Starting from a scalar field will make things simpler uh, in order to build an action which is also a Lorentz scalar. So the action is a functional of phi, and as before, I can define a Lagrangian um, by writing the action as a time integral of this Lagrangian. Written like that, it looks like we have only one dynamical variable, uh, phi. But keep in mind that, in fact, we have an infinite number of dynamical variables. Uh, that's the time dependence of phi for each point of space. Imagine, for instance, that we live in a discretized space which has only n positions. In principle, I should write one dynamical variable per position. This looks like a Lagrangian for n particles. So in fact, that's why we s sometimes say that uh, quantum field theory is like quantum mechanics, but for an infinite number of particles, because we have an infinite number of positions in space. This formulation of the Lagrangian as a function of the time derivative of phi is not entirely satisfactory. Special relativity requires an equivalence between space and time. Therefore, whenever I see a time derivative, I should also have a special derivative as well, which is just a covariant derivative. Therefore, it makes sense to require that the Lagrangian is a function not of the time derivative of phi, but of the covariant derivative of phi. So let's try to build our Lagrangian by requiring uh, two basic principles of physics, Lorentz invariance and simplicity. First, we know that we should have a del mu phi, otherwise there will be no time derivative and no dynamics at all. But the problem is that it introduces uh, Lorentz index mu, while I don't have any on the left-hand side. So I need to contract this Lorentz index. One possibility is to introduce a constant which transforms as a Lorentz for vector. But we will keep that possibility for later, when we will discuss the Dirac Lagrangian. Another possibility is to contract mu with, for instance, the position vector x mu or the energy momentum vector k mu. 
But the problem is that it will introduce a dependence on space, time, and therefore that will break the uh, invariance under space and time translation, uh, which is something I want to encode in the action itself. So I don't want to have any dependence of the Lagrangian uh, explicitly in X or K. So finally, what we will do is to contract del mu phi with another del mu phi. In fact, we could even take higher powers of del mu phi. However, this will make the problem much harder to quantize, and because one of our principles is simplicity, we will just take the second order in del mu phi, because that's all we need to encode the dynamics, and in particular a term like the kinetic energy. However, we can also add a constant in front of the derivatives, and we can also add a term uh, which will be a function of um, the field phi, because phi itself is a Lorentz scalar, so any function of phi will also be a Lorentz scalar. The action itself is just a number, and it's defined as a time integral of the Lagrangian. So the Lagrangian uh, may depend on time, but should not depend on space. However, what we have written here is a function only of the field, which depends on space and time. Therefore, I should integrate over space in order to have uh, a Lagrangian which only depends on time. So what we have between the bracket is a Lagrangian density. This allows us to write the action as a space-time integral of the Lagrangian density. The term del mu phi del mu phi is often written uh, del phi squared, which we can rewrite as function of space and time derivatives. We see that this term contains the square of the time derivative of phi. This is the analog of a kinetic energy in the case of a particle. This term should be positive because it should cost energy to put the field or the system into motion, like for a particle. That means that I have no choice but to take alpha positive. If it was negative, uh, I will gain energy by having faster and faster motion of the field, and therefore there will be no ground state for the system. And by convention, we will choose alpha equal plus one half. This is only a convention. The sign comes from the physics, a requirement to have a positive kinetic energy, but the choice of one half, the magnitude, is only a convention. We said that f could be any arbitrary uh, function of the scalar field phi. So let's take a polynomial expansion. In fact, f plays the role of a potential energy for the field. Adding a constant energy doesn't change anything, so I am free to get rid of f0 by choosing my uh, origin for the energy, which passes through the minimum uh, of the potential energy. Similarly, I can choose the origin for the field, so if I choose it to be at the bottom of the potential, uh, I get rid of f1 because there is no first-order derivative anymore. So I get the final expression for the Lagrangian density of my real scalar field. The way I wrote the constant in front of phi squared, phi 3 and phi 4, etc., is just a convention. So also we will see that the term m here will correspond to a mass later on. So far this is just a constant, so is gamma and so is lambda. This Lagrangian density ensures that the action is a Lorentz scalar. It is also itself a Lorentz scalar. You can see that each independent term is a Lorentz scalar. Um, that makes sense because the volume element in space-time uh, is Lorentz invariant. Therefore, we need to have the Lagrangian density uh, as a Lorentz scalar if I want the action to be a Lorentz scalar. This is not the case for the Lagrangian itself, because dt is not a uh, Lorentz invariant. So the Lagrangian is not Lorentz invariant either. For this reason, the Lagrangian density is a more fundamental object than the Lagrangian itself. So we will use from now on only the Lagrangian density. And in fact, we will often refer to it as a Lagrangian. We will forget to mention that it's a density.